Thanks for joining us for another avid chat. David Harpool, Jack Arnold. Jack, good to see you today. Good to see you, Dave. Uh, we wanted to throw out uh, another quick little webinar post-election, as we did one in pretty good detail, I think, leading up to election. And now that it's over, so, you know, essentially, uh, I think it's always good to kind of recap. And I think part of it is what we were feeling going into it, and then what we should keep in mind as we continue on to the next, let's say, till the next election, because this is inevitable. It happens every four years. Right. So let's start, Jack, with the, um, re let's recall a little bit of the sentiment going into the 2020 election. And what were some of the things that we discussed in the last webinar and maybe even, you know, friends, clients, family were, were saying about what might happen? The, well, the last chat, of course, we talked about who's going to be the president, what effect does that have on the stock market? We talked a lot about the fact that it probably does matter to what degree is unknown. Is it good, bad? It's hard to say. It's one of many factors. It will ebb and flow in terms of its importance. So it was hard to tease out what the cause and effect would be. So if you thought Trump would win, what does that mean? If you thought Biden would win, what does that mean, good, bad, or otherwise? A lot of it depended on kind of who your guy was, what you think was, was going to happen. Um, you know, we would get, I think one good thing is we do, people are open with us, obviously, about their investments, things that they're thinking. So we get we do get a pretty decent cross-section of people, you know, commenting on what they think is going to happen. And, you know, you would, we would get a version of the exact same argument for each camp. <laughs> it would be, yeah. If this is my person, they would make the same argument. It would just be if this, if my guy or the other guy wins, it would be basically the same thing. It was almost uncanny the way that it would work. And it was a lot of, if this person wins, well, I, this that's just it for this country and it's so bad for this. I, maybe I should just kind of sell things or should we change things around or what should I do, you know, given this election? Because, you know, whatever we thought was was going to happen. So, like, you know, we get it from both sides. Uh, that was a lot of it. Um, yeah. And, that, and I think we talked in the last webinar too about the, you know, um, politics, the economy, and the stock market are two different things. And though there might be some impact and some overlap, the businesses and um, capitalism, that really drives the US stock market. And historically, we looked at even the returns, uh, whether you're red or blue and kind of they were, there wasn't a whole lot of difference to it. So now that it's over, I think um, it's been interesting to kind of just see what's happened in the market. And I think you have some stats for us. Yeah, it is interesting. Um and one other thing we did talk about was, and not this is going to matter in just a second, is that if you are, if you're investing your money and you're one, and you have a well diversified portfolio, so you've got U.S. stocks, but you also have international stocks. You kind of have a globally diversified portfolio. It's not only what does the, you know, president mean or not mean for the stock market. Most people say the S and P 500, but even that is not what's quoted on the news. It's the Dow, which is 30 sure. stocks. It's, it, it's just a, it, there's just a lot more out there and those f effects are even more difficult to, to tease out. So just to give you an example. So again, let's recap. Going into it, there was lots of anxiety about what was going to happen, good, bad, or otherwise. If it was my guy that won, it's great. If it's the other guy, it, he's, it's the worst. And he's an idiot. My guy's the greatest. So this is just, today is Monday. What's the 16th, I guess? Yep. 16th. Monday, November 16th. So we're not even quite two weeks till election day. Tomorrow would be two weeks since election day. So just a little bit less than two weeks. But going back two weeks, so this is actually the day before, uh, starting the day before election day. So it would be the first, I guess it would have been. Okay. We've got just some performance numbers. And this is as of just when I looked it up not long ago. Um, you know, you've got US stocks 11 plus percent. Uh, international developed uh, stock markets. So that would be countries, international developed countries. It's mostly Western Europe, Japan, things like that. So international but developed economies. So that's 13 plus percent since then. And emerging market stocks, that's mostly China, India, countries like that, Brazil, bigger emerging market type countries. That's 9% or so. International value stocks, 9 plus percent. Domestic, so US value stocks, 14 plus percent. 
This is just <laughs> this is just since the day before election day. So had you said, I want to do something with my investments, my stocks, uh, I want to sell them or I want to put more in cash or whatever you thought you might be wanting to do. You know, you're looking out, you're looking at two weeks and you're up. Most of these things are double digits in less than two weeks. Now, does that mean that it continues on and goes on forever and we just never revisit the levels that we saw two weeks ago? No. Of course, it does not mean that. I don't really know. But had you done that, let's try to think through what that would be like. Here you are two weeks later, less than two weeks later after the election. And the stock market has done great globally. Yeah. What would you be doing? <laughs> so now what do you do? Do you just say, well, I was wrong and go ahead and put the money back in? Or do you kind of double down and say, well, it will come around. This is a temporary blip, which is and then you just start playing these mind games with yourself. I say it will just come back. And there's no shortage of people who thought that something bad was going to happen, whether that's this election or in 2009 or any other crisis that we've had in the last 20 years. They thought, well, I'm going to sell it, but I'll get back in when it's lower. And then it's never lower. And what do you end up doing? You just play mind games with yourself. So here we are. So it's two weeks later. I never would have expected it to be that much, but it is. That's that's a lot. Those are a year's worth of returns. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that's higher than the average annual historical returns. Yeah, for a lot of those in less than two weeks, which right. again does not mean that you know it never goes back to the you know previous levels, but it's just to illustrate that it's unexpected. Uh, yeah. and, you know, also we've got you know you've got a Democratic president now, but you've still got more likely than not a Republican Senate. Republicans picked up House. Uh, seats in the house seems kind of against expectations so anybody's expectation going into it is was probably off and you've got a somewhat mixed government um going into the next session and and one other point is you know neck we're in florida for where you're watching this is you know less than two years from now we have a midterm election coming up and we have a governor and a senator on the ballot so do you want to run this whole scenario back in two years and just drive yourself crazy, which things, if you're in Florida anyways, things that probably are much more impactful to your to your life, at least in the short run, governor and senator. So it's just a very difficult thing to say, this is what I think is going to happen in the election. Therefore, I'm going to do this with my investments. Yeah, I think that's that's it. It's OK to talk about it, to think about it give some ideas if maybe there was something drastically to do different. But as we always say, for your money that's invested for the long term, it's going to have very little impact. And even if you were to get the front end of the guessing, as I would call it, correct, let's just say three weeks ago, you said, you know what, if this happens, I think the market is going to take off all of them global. I'm going to put more money in. And you put more money in and you're up 10%. Great. Now what? <laughs> right. Are you selling it? Are you keeping it? Are you thinking, oh, what's well, it's up 10. It could go up 20. Let me put in more. And that the opposite could happen. So I think that the point from the emotional side is it's impossible to make an, an investment strategy out of how we feel about what might happen in the future. Yes. It's way easier to look back and say, wish I should have. Well, yeah, right. there's not a there's not a person on the planet that I don't think would say, man, if I would have had money back in March, phew, should have threw it into the market. Right, right. But in March, we we're like, there's no way. I mean, maybe we should all go to cash. In addition to global pandemic, elections are coming up. So ugh, the chances of this being a good investment year is slim. What do you guys think? <laughs> and then I think we kind of said the same thing, but it's just difficult to base any type of strategy or philosophy from investing on those things. Right. Anything that has to do with reading the newspaper and then deciding what you're going to do with your investments, almost certainly is going to be a loser strategy. It's just, it's impossible because that stuff's after the fact, it's already happened. The stock market somewhat forward looking. So that stuff more likely than not is somewhat factored into the, the price. It's already happened. It's old news at that point. Um, but also, but it's not just the presidency. Also, it's you mentioned March, which was was a good point. You know, here we are, where we've got coronavirus cases spiking, the highest that they've been since it started, I believe. 
Yeah. But here's the stock market is, you know, all time highs. And, and so it, it's just, man, that's impossible. That's just such a difficult thing to do um, to guess what's going to happen, read current events and make your decisions based on that. We beat to death, have a process and stick with it. Nothing is perfect, but have something that, you, that you're that you comfortable with, that you're willing to stick with through thick and thin, because there will be times that will test your faith and you need to be comfortable with what you're doing in order to stick with it. This game of trying to go in and out is just, you're going to drive yourself crazy and probably not get uh, very good results. Yeah. Over time. <laughs> And you know, something else that just popped into mind too is just the way that these things are perceived. And we're we're here talking about 10%, 12%, 13% returns. But the reality, I would think for most people, definitely if they're avid clients, when we run a diversified portfolio, that does not mean that your portfolio is up 10 or 13, that's true. you know, because you have other components in there. So I think that's also not always extrapolated and when you're listening to the news and the media that diversification typically means you're not going to hit the highs and the highs or the lows and the lows. So you have to have a realistic expectation that even though these things have done great in two weeks, it doesn't mean that your account statement's up 13% is what I'm trying to say. And it doesn't mean it, what's going to happen over the next two weeks. I really have no clue, uh, you know, it just as easily could go down 10 or 15%, but it wouldn't surprise me if it went up another 10 or 15%. I wouldn't, I'm just never surprised by what happens because it's just all over the place unexpectedly. So, you know, as we just beat to death, it's have some kind of plan in place. Let, let's talk about the things that are more important. So let's move up the chain a little bit is what are you trying to accomplish? What is important to you? Are, do, are you managing your cash flow? Are you saving enough? Do you have some kind of plan in place that you can stick with? Those things are going to be far more important and far more impactful than, you know, what's going on in the news or who is winning elections or who is not far more. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, I think those are good, I guess, closing recommendations and thoughts. Any Anything else to add or that you wanted to, to bring up? Uh, no. Uh, one of the point I was going to make is I think we may have mentioned this in the previous uh, chat was, we're close enough that you could still probably do this. You get further away and it's going to be difficult to try to take some notes as to kind of how you were feeling going into it and how you're feeling now. So maybe what were your expectations going in? How are you feeling, right? Keep taking some note of that. And then how are you feeling now? And what happened compared to what you thought was going to happen and how has it gone? Just to get a little bit of compare and contrast because this is going to happen again. If it's not just midterms, even if it's just presidential elections, not that far, we're less than four years and we're less than three from it being a major news story, start preparing mentally for this is how I felt before. I was my never met my expectations. It wasn't as bad or as good as I thought it was going to be. So some kind of, you know, just to check yourself a little bit as to what you were thinking, because you're going to forget all about this in three years and forget how it felt. So taking a note would be good. That's right. I, I think that's great. Next time it'll be different <laughs> right. as we, as we always hear. So great thoughts, good recap. Um, if we can be of any help to any of you out there, you want us as a resource or have questions, feel free to reach out and let us know. And in the meantime, we hope you stay safe, stay healthy. Jack, good to see you. Yep. All right, Dave. See you. Take care.